Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we're gonna go through my December TBR. As it is at the end of the year, I definitely have uh, more reading that I would like to get done that I know I'm not gonna be able to complete in the month of December, but I'm just gonna throw everything at you that I would like to read this month. Uh, and I know some of these will get done, but uh, some of them are definitely gonna have to wait until next year. But these are my current plans <laughs> for the books that I intend to read this month. I am currently in the middle, which this is crazy, I'm in the middle of five books right now. Uh, I usually only have three books. Uh, like on my current list. Usually I read uh, one book on my Kindle, one book on audio, and one book physically, and uh, I've gotten a little <laughs> involved in several physical reads, and so I actually have five books going on right now. So I'm going to talk about those first. These are books that I'm pulling over from November uh, that I just have portions of read. The first of the books that I'm pulling over from November is The Hanging City. Um, so this is a Goodreads Choice Awards nominee, and it was for the Romanticy category. This is the book that I got 100 pages in uh, in November, but I didn't want to rush through it, and so I am continuing this. Currently, I'm about 150 pages in, and so I probably will finish this within the first week of December. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, if you did not watch my Bucket Listathon update number three, where I talk about it, I'll just give you a brief synopsis here. So you follow a girl named Lark who is running from her father and kind of her past. And she takes refuge in a troll city. And trolls and humans do not get along. And she essentially goes to this troll city because she knows it's a place that her father will not look for her. And you also get to learn throughout her experience in living with trolls uh, about this city. So the city is a hanging city, which is called it's why it's called the Hanging City. You have a bridge with this massive city that is literally hanging uh, under the bridge. And you get to talk through in the book the process of how the trolls live here because they really don't go above the bridge. They don't go out into the world. They stay in their city and uh, they manage to cultivate food, water, uh, and jobs and things for people just directly in their city. And it's been really fascinating so far. I really enjoyed the characters and I can't wait to continue. The next book I'm pulling over from November is The Labyrinth's Heart. I did get um, about 300 pages in. <laughs> But this is a 700 page book or like 680 something page book. And so uh, I just put it down. Um, I, I am really enjoying it. I have really loved the first half of the book and uh, I'm excited to you know, finish up the finale of the Rook and the Rose series. If you haven't heard me talk about this book, it follows a con artist. Con artist. Uh, I won't tell you about the plot of this one since this is the finale, but a con artist who lives in a Venetian-like city. Uh, and she is trying to convince a noble family to take her in, uh, essentially to get their money, but little does she know that they are actually in financial uh, travesty. They, they do not have a lot of finances. They are actually struggling, and she gets herself a little bit deeper into the politics than she really wanted. Uh, the magic system in this book is absolutely, or in these books, is absolutely fantastic. The characters are lovely. You have this massive cast of characters, and uh, there's definitely a found family element. You have a kind of a an animal companion uh, in this book that I also find really amusing. And yeah, I just, I've had a blast with it. I can't wait to figure out how the Rook and the Rose series actually ends. The next book I'm pulling over from November is actually one of my Kindle reads. And it's not one that I've actually talked about on here. I am currently reading The Sons of Darkness. So this is a book that I've waited a very long time to read. I wanted to read this uh, last year, but there was some publishing issues with the book, um, but I was finally able to get it on Kindle. And so far I'm really enjoying it. I have, I did have to reread, I'm 10% in, uh, and I think this is like an 800 page book. Um, I had to reread the first 10% because I had read it so slowly in the month of November that I just felt like I needed to reread it to make sure I was understanding all the facets of the story so far. Uh, I honestly don't know <laughs> what, uh, where the story is going to lead. So far we have had, uh, the prologue is like on a different planet and with some immortal beings mixed with humans and some turmoil there. And then we've dealt with some um, oracles and learning about how they see the future and the brutal process of becoming an oracle. And now we're seeing a kingdom and its king 
and this war going on in human in the human realm. So I'm not quite sure <laughs> where the book's going to go, but I love the writing so far. The characters have been really interesting. The 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 prologue storyline I found so far, so the fact that we have the three different things going on, um, each one has characters that I'm really interested in. And so I don't know if we're ever going to get back to those characters or if, I don't know, because I, I don't know where the book's leading, but I, I've been fascinated so far. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, inspired by, um, I think it's some form of Indian mythology. There's a, a story that I'm not going to be able to remember the name of. Um, that it's inspired from and the, the author's note talks about it. I have never read that particular lore and so I I maybe will look into it because I believe that uh, Kai Kai was also based off of the same lore and so I after I read this I will have to go back and, and research and try and figure out where I can find the original text uh, and see where this is inspired from but we will see. So far I'm really enjoying it. It's probably going to take me all of December to get through it, if not a little bit into January, just because of how large it is. My Kindle reads, I tend to get through a little bit slower because I only read them before bed. And so it's really up to the night of <laughs> when I decide to actually go to bed and how much time uh, I have before my body is like, nope, you need to sleep. Um, but I, I have really enjoyed it so far, so I'm excited to continue. The fifth current read <laughs> that I have uh, is Salvaged. So I am reading this, buddy reading this with Leandra. And this book is sci-fi horror. Um, we have a character whose name is Rosalind who is on a salvage team and the company that she's working with has started to see some devastating things happen to some of the teams that they are sending out and so there's this mystery in the background. This book <laughs> is I mean, starting from the first page, it's very graphic and so if you're not into that, I definitely would not pick this up. Um, this is <clears throat> very similar to the book Dead Silence that Leander and I read together and so we're kind of having a fun time comparing the two and um, seeing which ones we like better. Uh, I, I will let you guys know that once I finish. We are about a hundred pages in. Uh, we're reading about 50 pages a day so we'll be able to finish this within the, the first week of December. Um, so yeah, that's my fifth current read. <laughs> so now on to the books I haven't picked up yet. Or no, never mind. I have one more book. <laughs> that I'm currently in the middle of. So I think that was only four. So the fifth book is my audiobook, which is Stiletto. So Stiletto is the second book in the Rook, uh, or the Shake 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 series. The first book is the Rook, and Stiletto is the second book. And I'm about 25 pages, or 25% into this. I am listening to it on audio, and um, I don't know what I think so far. The original storyline, I absolutely loved the Rook, and uh, the choices that Miffany has to make throughout. But this book, The Stiletto, follows a different main character and a different path. It seems to be a lot more about the history of the Shake and, um, yeah, some past wars and some trials and uh, hatred and grudges that have gone on between humans and another set of characters that are in this. So I, I found it interesting. I just, I wish that we would have continued with Miffany's character. And Miffany is, does make an appearance in this book. Um, and I don't know how big of a character that she's going to be, but uh, in the first 25% we have seen a little bit of her. I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what my thoughts will be so far. I, I still enjoy the writing. I am intrigued uh, in all the characters that are in this. Uh, I just don't know that I am as invested in the story because it does seem to be, so far we're learning so much history um, that I think I would rather be in it. I think I would rather be in the events that are happening and a lot of what we've learned so far is just about the history of this organization and how they came to be. The next book that I'm going to read is a maybe. I still need to um, confirm with Jolene over at Book Room Adventure Girl that we are reading this together. Um, but if we do, this is going to be another buddy read, and that is Rouge by Mulan. Uh, I almost said Mulan Rouge. <laughs> Uh, this is Rouge by Mona Awad, and I honestly know nothing about this book. Uh, this is another Goodreads Choice Awards nominee, and I am reading this because I enjoyed Bunny, was confused by Bunny, uh, intrigued by Bunny, and so I would like to read more of Mona Awad. Um, I think that this has something to do with 
Um, I don't, I don't know if this is considered horror. I think it is. I think this is considered horror. And I think it has something to do with changing your face, uh, or, um, maybe the process of, I don't know if it's like plastic surgery or if it's just makeup or I don't, I don't know. I, I think it has something to do with changing your appearance. Uh, so we shall see what this is about. Um, and like I said, depending on whether or not, uh, our schedules coincide, uh, Jolene and I, I don't know if I'll be reading this this month, but it's definitely on my radar for, uh, future months. Next, I also have somebody reads with Nala over at Here There Be Stories. And these books <laughs> maybe, or maybe not be read in December. They, uh, currently on my Libby app, I, I have some wait time for them to come in. And so depending on how quickly other people read, I may not be able to access these until the very last week of December or uh, the very first week in January. So we will see, but I'm excited about these two uh, reads. The first is Jade City and the second is The Book of Coley. So Jade City, uh, I don't really know much about and I kind of want to go in blind. I know that there is, uh, it's political fantasy and I know that it has a, a larger cast of characters and it's, um, they're chonky books. And so I am excited to um, perhaps add these to my chonky list. I don't know if they're over 500 pages or not, um, but I, I'm excited to finally get into Jade City. Uh, this is a series that I've been wanting to get into for a really long time, so I'm glad that I can finally do that with Nala. The Book of Coley is a climate fantasy, climate science fiction. <laughs> uh, all I know is that it has plants and the plants can potentially eat people. <laughs> so uh, I, I want to know what this world is about and uh, what it's like to live in the Book of Coley. We'll, we'll see how this one goes. The next book that I plan on reading in December is one that I should have read a long time ago and I have not. And that is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm excited to finally get to this. This is a book that I have heard so many people talk about and uh, in my like everyday life, but also on booktube. And I hear quotes from it all the time. And I, I just want to know what all the fuss is about. I know that it's about um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I guess is a publication. So maybe a book within a book type of scenario and someone who uh, leaves Earth because Earth gets demolished and travels around the galaxy and I guess uses this as a guide to make sure that they don't get into more trouble than they need to. Uh, I'm not sure. So uh, I, I don't, I, even though I've heard a ton of people talk about it, I have not really paid attention to what the plot of the book is, um, but I am excited to finally get into this. I've heard people say that it's hilarious uh, and I, yeah, I can't, I can't wait. Next in December will be Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. So I am excited to pick this up mainly because I have read Nat Cassidy's book, Mary, and absolutely loved it. And so I just want to read more of Nat Cassidy's works. This book uh, follows a couple, and I believe that couple has just had a baby. Uh, the birth of the baby was very, very hard on the mother. And so the mother is having some medical issues. And um, while the baby is very young, some odd things are happening to the baby that the parents really can't explain. That's all I really know, uh, but I'm, I'm just excited because I absolutely adored Mary, the, um, the social commentary that Nat Cassidy had in that book, but also the un, unexpected hero, I guess, of the story. The story surrounding the main character in Mary uh, was absolutely fantastic and intriguing and it pulls you in. Uh, I loved the, components of her growth throughout the book and her kind of coming, uh, the, <laughs> the storyline in that book about hating aging and, uh, kind of having to come to terms with your own demise in a way, uh, was really intriguing. And I like how Nat Cassidy handled it. And so I'm excited to read more horror novels by Nat Cassidy. Next is Furies of Cauldron by Jim Butcher. This I am reading because I am curious <laughs> on one of the sprints that we had in November, a, um, one of the people in the comments, his name was Zach. I can't remember what his last name was mentioned that Furies of Cauldron, um, is very similar in plot to 
the book that wouldn't burn. So much so that some people would say that the uh, one book was, which it would be the book that wouldn't burn, was based off of uh, some of the events that happened in Furies of Cauldron. And so I would just like to see for myself and compare and contrast uh, and see if I agree with that assessment or if I can at least see like the inspiration behind it. Um, so yeah, that is one of the books that I will be reading in December. Next is The Narrow Road Between Desires. This is another uh, novella by Patrick Rothfuss uh, that is in the King Kingkiller Chronicles realm. I believe that this one follows a character named Bast and his backstory. And so I am, I, I absolutely loved the silent regard of or small, slow regard of silent things, uh, which was his other novella. And so I am excited to read another novella by Patrick Rothfuss. His writing and his prose never disappoint. Uh, so even if I don't enjoy the story, I will at least uh, enjoy the his, his writing. But I have not been disappointed by one of his stories so far. And I really enjoyed the character Bast uh, in the King Killer Chronicles. I will not tell you about Bast because I don't want to spoil anything if you guys have not read The Name of the Wind. Um, but it is from the original King Killer Chronicles series that Patrick Rothfuss wrote. The last three books <laughs> that I have for this crazy TBR is uh, three rereads. So one of the things I would like to do in December, because I like end of year content, I want to make my top lists and put those out in December, but I also don't want to essentially not put the books that I'm reading on December on those lists because I haven't gotten to them yet. And so I think the last at least week of December, I'm going to be focusing on some rereads uh, for the year. So the first book that I will be rereading is The Well of Ascension, which is the second book in the Mistbor era one. So I was supposed to reread all of Mistborn this year and I did not get to that. I only got to the first one, but I am excited to start the second series. If you haven't heard of Mistborn, you follow a young urchin girl named Ven who is, um, has some magical powers. I, I won't go too much into that, uh, but she lives in a city essentially where the bad guy won. And so you have the Lord Emperor who is <sighs> not a very nice person. The people kind of live in destitute and there are two sects of people that uh, there is essentially like a, a revolution that is coming and then gets mixed up in the turmoil of that. So this is uh, her story. And The Well of Ascension, uh, if I remember correctly, was my favorite from the first trilogy. Uh, I don't know if it won out over the very last one because I really enjoyed the ending of Mistborn, but we shall see. Uh, so with this reread, uh, I'm excited to get to this. The next reread is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This was one of the books that uh, inspired me to start a YouTube channel. And this kind of happened, uh, I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue kind of right at the start of COVID and it definitely uh, gave me a place to feel safe within books and escape uh, reality a little bit. If you haven't heard of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, you follow Addie LaRue, who makes a deal with a dark being. Uh, and she essentially can live forever, but whenever she talks with someone, uh, as soon as they turn away from her or walk away from her, the if they sleep, they completely lose any memories that they had of her. And so she goes throughout her life being forgotten completely. And uh, you get to see the repercussions of that, the repercussions of living forever, um, the loneliness that she goes through. I absolutely love this book the first time I read it and I can't wait to read it again. And the last book on this TBR, the last reread for the year will be The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Um, I figure <laughs> with The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, uh, which is a little bittersweet and sad, uh, and The Well of Ascension, I, I also wanted like a lighthearted uh, kind of fun read, although, she who drank the moon or the girl who drank the moon also has some darkness in it as well uh, or some sadness i shouldn't say darkness but if you haven't ever heard of the girl who drank the moon you follow uh, a young girl i can't remember her name um, but she's from a village where once a year this village abandons a baby in the woods because they believe that there is a witch in the woods that they have to protect themselves from and so they give this sacrifice every year so the witch will leave them alone and on the other side of things you have a witch in the woods <laughs> who goes to this village every year because she knows that this village abandons children and she doesn't know why, um, but she always goes and takes care of the children and will take them to neighboring villages to adopt them out to make sure that the children are well, care well cared for. Cared <laughs> for. Well, one of the children that she picks up um, is this young girl that you follow throughout the book and she uh, ends up 
ingesting more magic than the witch anticipated and so the witch decides to adopt her herself um, so she can take care of her because it can be dangerous to put a magic wielder into the hands of someone who does not know about magic and you get to see this little girl grow up with the witch and this lovely cast of characters in the woods and it's just a heartwarming story i really enjoyed it uh, it was one of my top books of the year last year and so i thought it would be a great topper uh, on the year of 2023 so that is my absurdly long TBR for this month. <laughs> I know that I'm not going to get through all of these, but those are my goals uh, to get through this year. What are you guys reading in December? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, what are you most excited to read in December? And what was your favorite book from November that you read? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.